welcome today to the Mom 301 Fall 2020 Film Festival and Review. We had a very exciting semester as we conducted all of the classes online. Students were faced with new questions with the online platform like, how do we technically film at the highest quality videos and audio through an online process? How do we talk to and get rapport with our interviewees, our subjects? And how do we use archival materials and open source programs to our advantage? And lastly, how do we interpret all of the media we gather online to reflect our own personal style? Students answered these questions by devising new workflows individually and through team production and post-production. They collaborated through Miro and learned about archival materials, specifically classifications related to public domain, creative commons, fair use, and materials releases. So the semester was divided into two projects. The first project, was individual and focused on the interpretation of regional designers' vision as an artist into a poetic documentary with the support of Film My Design and artist Nijum. Six of these projects were selected for multiple uh, screenings at Dubai Design Week in November, which was very exciting for us. And for the second project, MUM 301 students collaborated with SBA's financial crime course to complete a documentary short on financial crime and MLMs. The first part of the semester, the financial crimes course, which is taught by Dr. Kim Gleason, took the helm and gathered evidence related to fraud in MLMs, specifically in the United States. Then, halfway through the semester, MUM 301 students took that evidence, sourced it, looked at it, and spoke with those students about how they could transform that research, that evidence, as a catalyst for a, a documentary short. So stick around tonight to watch all of the projects. We'll start with the financial crime collaboration and move to the poetic documentary collaboration with Film My Design, and I will give a final thought at the end. Oh, and there will be one intermission in between the two projects, so you'll have time to take a little break. Without further ado, To the outside world, it looks a lot more normal. Like it's just like any other company selling oils, selling diffusers, blends. I found many examples of people complaining about the company, of people saying that they made millions and others saying that they've lost all their money through the propaganda that the members tell them. It was very much like they were trying to paint such a pretty picture. It looked distorted, it looked weird. I investigated Young Living for possible financial fraud. Okay, so hi, my name is Fatma. I'm a senior at AUS. I'm a finance major and a minoring in marketing. My group members and I decided to venture out and work on infiltrating a company called Young Living, which is an MLM. Young Living is a multi 
Level Marketing Company based in Utah that sells essential oils and other products, like I said, diffusers, blends, detergents, and other products. Generally, distributors have two main ways to make money. Sell the product itself, whether it's uh, makeup, vitamins, or health shakes, and earn money on those sales. And, and this is key, recruit other people into the company and get money based on their sales and the sales of people they recruit in turn. We are here in the beautiful Idaho Panhandle, just south of the Canadian border, where Young Living Essential Oils is embarking on the historic harvesting of the Idaho balsam fir trees. This little bottle of oil contains the secret, the keys to health, longevity, and vitality for the 21st century. And how do we obtain this precious oil? Let us hear from the man who has made it all possible, president and founder of Young Living Essential Oils, Dean Carey Young. To truly understand a company and its beliefs, I think it's important to look at who founded the company and why. So who is the man who would eventually create the company involved in trafficking charges, pyramid scheme claims, cash action lawsuits, all while touting the appearance of being holistic and healthy? University is known as a mail order diploma mill where you give them a certain amount of money and they mail you a certification. Degrees from that location are essentially useless. In 1982, he opened up his own health care clinic in Spokane, Washington. It was called Golden Six Health World and it essentially offered unlicensed medical services, which, by the way, is against the law. According to an article published in the Spokane Chronicle on Thursday, October 7th, 1982, the title of the article is Water Birth Tragedy, Baby Girl Dies in Whirlpool Bath. Basically, the article tells about a baby who died on September 4th, 1982 in the healthcare facility in which Gary Young owned. The baby had been left submerged underwater after birth for an hour. When looking at MLMs, we decided to look at a bunch of companies and we found that Young Living kind of caught our eye a little more. My main partner was Farida and we decided to um, take on this whole experience by going undercover. My name is Farida and I was the one who um, made the Instagram account. I went to a website that just generated like random personalities and that's when Lynn Logan was like born. We sent like a standard message, hey, we're looking to know more about Young Living and we finally got a solid um, contact, which was Jordan. Jordan was very willing to uh, talk to us. She was very willing. I asked her, can you come on Zoom to talk to me and my friend? And she was so down. So then we spoke to her and she basically just told us a bit of what we know, which is Young Living is a company, a multi-level marketing company that sells oils that are very healthy for you. And we're like, okay, great. We know that. Um, can you tell us something a bit more um, personal to you? I actually had um, a fungal infection and then we found out my mom had stage four ovarian cancer. 
She was on her deathbed. We started giving her frankincense and myrrh in capsule form. And it's been now seven months and she's pretty much almost back to like my old mom. I could not believe the power of oils. Miraculously, she was cured. Her mom was cured of cancer. To us, it was an immediate, okay, she's already lying. Is this woman really trying to convince us that herbal oils, essential oils, just cured her mother from cancer? Apparently, one day at customer service, they weren't getting any calls. And so he got abundance oil and he actually anointed the phones with the oil. And within minutes, the phones started ringing off the hook. It was very much like, okay, strike one, counselor story, strike two, phone story with the oils. What's next? We also like looked into Young Living on like Reddit or like just on Instagram posts or Facebook. It was basically like this mom and her kid had Down syndrome, her son, and she just talked about how like the essential oils made him normal. Like he was just not, like it wasn't a disability anymore. His life was okay. Even though like, it's not real. Like everyone knows it's not real. Science has proven it's not real. My little children, you know, when they have emotions, I give them valor and I have them breathe it in, you know, and so it's helping, I rub it on their feet. The only other thing that I would assume to make you feel suddenly at ease are illegal. And we're like, okay, so you recommend us buying it? She goes, exactly. And don't buy, like, buy the products and don't enter the business side immediately, which is where you make the money and you join the hierarchy. And we asked her, like, why? Like, it's so weird that you're not encouraging us to join the company fully in terms of business. And she said, because I want you guys to have a story like me. Just like my mom was cured from cancer, hopefully you're cured from something too. Which is the exact opposite of what everyone else told us. Like everyone else we talked to was like wanting us to get on board so they could make money. And it's not like, okay, I have a job. I love my job. I love being an accountant. This is great. It's a lot more to do with obsession and impressing, in this case, Young Living. And the Lord told me that this business that he was going to bring me to would be be natural for me. And she kept talking about, you know, religion and mostly Christianity and the Lord. When we asked her, do you recruit people? I don't recruit people. <laughs> I don't believe in that. I just tell my story and I ask the Lord to bring them to me. The cults that are more likely to stick are the ones that base everything off religion. This feels a lot like a cult dynamic. So there are nine positions, nine levels that you can soar up to. And starting from the lowest, you have the star where you earn an average monthly income of $75. And then comes the highest level, which is the Royal Crown Diamond, which you earn six figures per month. If you look at the income disclosure statement, it's a very minimal percentage of people breaking even, let alone making money. Majority of the members are you could say brainwashed or roped into something that they don't understand the workings of. Yeah, no, I just feel bad for them. Like, I just feel like they need saving. Even though these bottles are small, these uh, oils are very concentrated and you only need just a drop of really to get the effects. These are super dynamic oils. We could use them for all different things. 
So an MLM stands for multi-level marketing, and it is, as the name suggests, a marketing strategy. How it works is essentially a person would go and buy products from a distributor to sell them, uh, becoming a distributor themselves, and then go on to try and convince the person who they've sold their products to, uh, to also become a distributor, uh, which creates a chain of distributors. So let's take the example of doTERRA. Um, I would buy the products from one of the distributors that we interviewed and sell them to, let's say, two people. Uh, the distributor that I bought from initially would get a cut from the sales I've made. And I would also try to convince the people that I've sold to to become sellers themselves. So how it would work is when, once I sell to, let's say, two people, whenever they make sales, I get a cut out of it. And so would the the person at the top of the chain, who is the person who I bought my uh, products from, oils in this case. And uh, it basically leads to an exponentially growing chain of uh, sellers. What you would do once you get your oils and we, once you start to get to know them and you start teaching your classes and you share with your friends and your family or you share on social media and say, you know, someone is interested, you would share with them the starter options that they could do and you would help them start an account and they would be your personal customer. I heard this a lot and it, I think it's kind of that cult mentality that's very scary to people. If you lose friends and family over this, then they were probably not a good friend to begin with. We did actually come to a conclusion that there is a product, but it's at the same time, it's a fraud as well, the MLM. It's an MLM which is just selling you the distributorship because they just take uh, your money and well, they, and then they pay you just other people's money. So it's just a circle that, get, that keeps going on. I would put two drops of each in these veggie caps, in two veggie caps, take them in the morning, and I did that in the morning and at night mm -hmm. for about a week. And I was like, oh, my allergy, I I'm fine. Wow. So it's now been about 18 months about, wow. and amazing. I have not taken any medicine. Today is going to be one of the toughest things I never thought I would have to overcome. Last night, I found out one of my six-year-old students I work with in my class passed away in a car accident. Now I have to inform 18 other students that she went to heaven and won't be back. One thing I do know is I'm so very lucky to be able to apply these two awesome oils on to help me with the breathing process. It is unlawful under the Federal Trade Commission Act to advertise that a product can prevent, treat, or cure human disease unless you possess competent and reliable scientific evidence. And there's nothing on the website or any kind of education that they provide for people to tell them to check when it comes to their medications. I don't care if it's aspirin. Do you know that rosemary interacts with aspirin? People want to say they're natural and they're pure. There's still chemicals and there's hundreds of chemicals in each one of these things. And not all of those chemicals have been researched. And I find that to be really dangerous to tell people to use them willy nilly without going to check and make sure that they're not going to interfere with their medications. They interfere with blood clotting. That's real. doTERRA wellness advocates have been caught lying. In 2014, the Federal Trade Commission formally warned doTERRA about their reps making unverified claims about their products, including that they can cure or ease symptoms of among many other diseases and conditions. Ebola, cancer, brain injury, autism, Alzheimer's, Crohn's disease, Bell's palsy, endometriosis, hyperthyroidism, diabetes, bronchitis, MRSA, chickenpox, warts, cold sores, lupus, candida, viral infections, measles, pneumonia, neuralgia, and tuberculosis. Another key issue with doTERRA is that their products are consistently more expensive than other essential oil distributors and are not necessarily of a higher quality. Here is an example of the price difference between doTERRA and other brands taken from this article. You can pay about $30 for half an ounce of doTERRA lavender oil 
or spend a similar amount for 4 ounces of Nao Lavender Oil. The Nao Lavender product is extremely well reviewed, showing that it is quality product and not a cheap knockoff. Does the quality of doTERRA's products justify their price tag? Proponents of doTERRA products claim that the oils are of a high quality because they are certified pure therapeutic grade and FDA approved. However, that official sounding phrase certified pure grade is nothing more than a marketing slogan. It's a commercial trademark that doTERRA owns and pays for. There must be a lot of awareness about what it means to work for an MLM and what the chances of success are. Maybe only then, less people would be fooled by products that neither hurt nor cure them, but will only waste their money. I've always wanted to be successful, build up a career with my ambition, and make my parents proud. One day, I stumbled upon a beauty influencer talking about the greatness of a company called Pharmacy. It's basically a website. It's originally from Europe, I think Turkey, and then they moved like two years ago into the US, like they opened up there. And they sell beauty products, skincare products for women and men. And you can just be a regular customer and go and buy your own product. The great thing about this company is that there are no quotas to me in order to um, stay active with the company. Um, I think every six months you have to place like a $50 order, which is what I, I buy my whole family's household needs for it. Um, all the soaps, shampoos. Um, I also have a big passion for makeup and skincare, which actually led me into the business that um, I was in for a little over two years. So we're going to jump right into it. So the reason that you're watching this is because you probably want to know a little bit about pharmacy or you want to know why somebody would leave another company for pharmacy. I have a little social media planner right here and it kind of gives you ideas for posting every day. So I post every day to my media accounts. I never miss a day. In the beginning, I thought I would love it. But of course, I was fooled. Once a year, MLM companies love to rent out stadiums and event centers and slap their name all over it. They build massive stages and hire an impressive light and camera crew, and sometimes have fireworks and entertainers like Andy Cohen, Mario Lopez, and Kelly Clarkson. MLM companies love to make these events larger than life. Then they hire a production team to cleverly edit every thrill, every big moment, every firework and twirl, and package it together making sure to leave out anything that doesn't make your heart race. Then they sell you the dream and tell you how you can't miss next year's event. You have to build financial freedom starting today and they want to help you do it because they care. And I fell for all of it. They'll trap you in with like the idea that you can make money on your own terms, free up your schedule, get financial freedom, just working from home in your pajamas and stuff like that. And that's like, that's the whole kind of like appeal to it. I feel like for most people, all of the people that we interviewed were actually moms in their twenties, thirties, mostly were young moms as well. So they said that they target people, I think 18 and above or be just in their 20s. I wanted to be able to produce an income from home because I knew that one day I was going to have kids and I really wanted to be able to stay home with them and I think that a lot of um, stay-at-home moms or anybody who wants to be a stay-at-home mom they kind of get sucked into this idea that they need to 
um, get into network marketing in order to make money and work from home and doesn't always turn out that way, especially in an MLM. I mean, now when I go on Instagram, I'm like, wait, that's an MLM. And I never knew that before. Like I could have easily joined any of them, but we don't know. And even the ones on Instagram, you're not sure if they are or not. There has to be more awareness, awareness to this, like in the, especially in our region, because I don't think anyone knows what they are or what they do. You just, they just come to you and say, oh, join, join us, but you never know. Pharmacy is complicated. It is complicated AF, dude. I'm talking so complicated that like, there are like formulas to understand how team bonuses work and like getting compensation from your upline or your downline, I mean. If you don't have a college math degree, <laughs> you're gonna have a hard time figuring out how much money you're gonna make. I thought about my family, who raised me to be the woman I am, and decided it is now my turn to speak up against MLM for my supporters and the people unaware of their traps. I was not the first nor the last person to fall into the trap of MLMs. These companies prey on people's biggest insecurities, their physical appearances and financial statuses. My hope in sharing this is to let those lured into these schemes know that they are not alone either. The best we can do is learn from it, move forward, and empower others to not fall into the same trap. Together, let's aim to stop MLMs. Living in a capitalist and profit-driven world, multi-level marketing businesses often try to sell the idea of the perfect entrepreneur life. That is also what Monet, an infamous MLM, promises its employees. Students in the financial crimes class from the American University of Sharjah have been tasked with infiltrating Monet and gathering evidence to support that claim. Modern Nature, or better known as Monet, is an American MLM headquartered in Florida that sells hair care and skin care products as well as wellness vitamins which they claim to be natural, safe, and sustainable. As with many MLMs, it has been accused of being a pyramid scheme. According to the South Dakota Consumer Protection Office of Attorney General, Multi-level marketing, MLM, or network marketing is individuals selling products to the public, often by word of mouth and direct sales. The main idea behind the MLM strategy is to promote maximum number of distributors for the product and exponentially increase the sales force. The promoters get commission on the sale of the product as well as compensation for sales their recruits make. Thus, the compensation plan in multi-level marketing is structured such that commission is paid to individuals at multiple levels when a single sale is made, and commission depends on the total volume of sales generated. Pyramid schemes are, however, fraudulent schemes disguised as an MLM strategy. The difference between a pyramid scheme and the lawful MLM program is that there is no real product that is sold in a pyramid scheme. Participants attempt to make money solely by recruiting new participants into the program. The hallmark of these schemes is the promise of sky-high returns in a short period of time for doing nothing other than handing over your money and getting others to do the same. For starters, it is important to note that while pyramid schemes are illegal, an MLM may still operate the same way as a pyramid scheme through the use of loopholes and by sidestepping the law. We interviewed Dana, one of the financial crime students, to share her experience. As was foreseeable, her encounter complemented that of many others. Did you get any one of the Munat staff to admit to something? Um, they said that they don't know what a pyramid scheme is. Again, like a lot of corporate businesses are the same way. They have a CEO, they have presidents of the company, and they have like managers, assistant managers, employees, and then mm -hmm. janitors. I hate to say that, but like <laughs> that's you know that's that's how it looks. Yes. But that janitor will never come, will never go above that CEO. Mm -hmm. There's no way. But like I said, there's people that I sign up underneath me who 
could rank above me. And when asked whether or not Monet was a pyramid scheme, the Monet employees seem not to know the definition of a pyramid scheme, and their counterpoints are irrelevant in refuting that claim, thus resulting in a straw man fallacy. Laura says that Monet cannot be a pyramid scheme as they are illegal and refutes the claim by mentioning how in an MLM someone cannot rank the person who recruits them. What she fails to mention, however, is that the recruiter will still make part of the money that the person who outranks them makes as they are in their downline. Most multi-level marketing companies get a bad rep for the pyramid scheme. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of companies and a lot of businesses out there have kind of put, put that bad taste in people's mouths because of how they go along doing things. Like the cold messaging, oh, you haven't talked to someone since high school. Oh, hey, guess what? I'm selling hair care products. Are you interested? Well, you haven't talked to that person in like 15 years. And they're not going to be interested. Interestingly, despite what she said, Monet is also notorious for having the most annoying recruitment and selling methods, as indicated by these posts from the subreddit anti-MLM on the website Reddit, where people share experiences of being cold messaged by old schoolmates, family members, or strangers online. What would you say that uh, Monat's primary target are for recruitment? Um, single mothers, like just mothers who are looking to for external income and want their time, want to spend their time in some efficient way. I try to kind of target, not target, but like go for, um, you know, maybe stay at home moms that either might need a second, like might, might be interested in the products and trying to build a little business for themselves. Um, and new moms that have like postpartum hair loss. Uh, they said that we'd be one big happy family and like we all live better and healthier with a higher income and we'd just be doing something more efficient in our lives. It's time to take control of your life. I'm gonna be real with you guys. If you're working at a nine to five, your bosses are probably thinking about laying you off right now. I'm gonna be real with you guys. Like Miss Rona has everybody f***ed up, okay? You are capable of so much more. You are not a body walking on earth just to be here, just to think, just to have opinions of things, just to react to certain things, just to eat, drink, and, and, and sleep. That's not what you're here for. As seen just now, Monet employees also target people daring unstable circumstances in moments of weakness and attempt to recruit them making it seem like a life-changing opportunity that is sure to pan out and bring fast results. A trendy shampoo that made all sorts of promises to its customers is once again under the microscope. In 2018, its users started reporting balding and scalp sores. Now, Monet is signing a compliance agreement and issuing refunds. I started noticing my hair was just falling out in handfuls. When she complained to the company, a Monet rep told her it was detox. And they said that your hair has to detox and get rid of all the buildup that's on your hair. That's just one of the claims the multi-level marketer is no longer allowed to make. In August, Monet signed this assurance of voluntary compliance to resolve an investigation by the attorney general in Florida. The AG was aware of more than 800 consumer complaints across the country. Additionally, the financial crime student's investigation has shown that Monet employees have been caught lying about receiving certification, ingredients, and effects of certain products. This escalated into an issue where users of Monet hair care were experiencing hair fallout and scalp irritation at alarming rates. Hello, Monet family, and happy November. I love this time of year, sweaters and jeans and sweatshirts. It's also the season of giving. As consumers and possible recruits, it is our right to know where our money is going if we invest in this company. As if all of that was not bad enough, Stuart A. McMillan, the president of Monet, was the former CEO of Telexfree, a Ponzi scheme and helped the company with its bankruptcy exit strategy. Ponzi schemes are point blank fraud, so what is McMillan doing running an MLM? Which leads us to the multiple lawsuits that Monet has been involved in. They have sued previous employees for posting remarks about the company online and have been sued for their hair care products causing scalp sores and balding as previously seen. One such incident was the Monet vs. Vicky Harrington lawsuit where a previous market partner or employee, Vicky, had left the company and began exposing the dangerous side effects of Monet on her Facebook account. 
Monet alleges that her claims were doctored and misleading and therefore filed a lawsuit for damages. Let us revisit the South Dakota Consumer Protection Office of Attorney General. It says to study the company's track record and search the company on the internet followed by the words review, scam, or complaint. It also says to check what the buzz is about the company and its products on blogs and websites. Monet has an overwhelmingly negative online presence if one so much as searches those keywords. As stated previously, many suspected to be a pyramid scheme operating under the guise of an MLM. Here we have presented the evidence, but the rest is up to you. Do you think Monet is a pyramid scheme or simply a dysfunctional MLM? Young Living is a company that sells essential oils, but there's a bit of a twist. Once you buy a product, you become a Young Living member. This gives you the opportunity to start your own business. Your business is basically referring Young Living to other people. Once you refer to people, you get paid. They claim that you can start your network of referrals and build your very own business empire and make money out of it. We will be looking into whether this company is fraudulent or not. I've been using Young Living for six, seven years. Um, and I got introduced by a family member who really loved them. And I studied um, nutrition at UT and oh. I was pre-med. And so I um, was, I'm just like already was really into health and wellness and like all of that side. And I really liked that there was like something like lavender you can use for sleep. So I was like, okay, that's cool because that's like, I like that, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's how I got started. And originally I was kind of like you too. I'm like, oh, this smells good. I want my yeah. house to smell good. I also had people who were like, you can do this as a business. You can do this as a business. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Um, so say Bob comes to your house and it's like, I want one of those. And you give him your referral. He orders. He'll make... Um, or you'll make fifty dollars for him ordering a starter kit. Yeah. But say someone goes to Bob's house and is like, "I want that too." Bob can just give them their referral code, and you're going to make five percent of everything that that person um, orders as well. So, like, yeah. So that's where it like really gets fun and exciting. Is like the more people share, the more that you're actually um, you're earning. Once you become a Young Living member, they start teaching you the five steps for you to be able to recruit other members. The first step is to figure out what your capital is. In your case, your capital is the list of people you know. Yeah, so you, if anyone gets a starter kit, uh, uh, you'll get $50 every time someone does that. So that's like an automatic $50. And then you'll also get um, forever, like Anytime they ever order ever again, you'll get 8% of everything. The second step of the recruitment process is to pick out some people from the list of people you know and to invite them for a meeting. Uh, in this meeting is step three, which is the presentation. This is where you introduce the company and certain terms have to be used. Terms like financial freedom, building your own empire, a network. Um, you, you need to advertise it for them. Tell them that there is no boss to employee relationship. We're all in the same family. These are the terms they usually use and they usually just try to make it fun for other members to want to be part of uh, Young Living. The fourth step is objection handling. And this is your ability to manage to reply to all of the scam accusations and clear out any doubts uh, for the person that you're trying to recruit. After convincing the prospect, the most important step and the last step is closing. Closing is essentially the step where you sign the contract with them and they become Young Living members too. One of the main techniques that is used when closing the deal is the cost of delay. They tell the prospect that the later you are, the more money you'll lose out on making. Because the earlier you are, the higher up you are in the network and everyone below you, you get money for them. Going back to our question, is Young Living really a scam? 
although technically it isn't a scam because you can still make money out of it even if it's really difficult and unrealistic it's still possible but the bigger problem is that you are brainwashed into loving the cycle of five steps that you are lost in and then all your friends family members are going to be seen as bags of money all your relationships are just going to be work and business related To survive as an entrepreneur, it takes inner drive, hard work, and a lot of dedication. Randy Ray and Wendy Lewis are just that. Randy, the son of a farmer, grew up in an impoverished home where basic necessities were a privilege. I know what it feels like to have nothing. I know how it feels to be homeless, not have a place to live. I know what it's like to go to school with snow on the ground and no shoes. Driven by his overwhelming desire to inspire others regardless of their circumstances, Randy founded Jeunesse with his wife Wendy on September 9th, 2009, in hopes of enhancing other people's lifestyles. I mean, they're really, really excited about us being there. And they have nobody as their advocate except us. We, we make a difference in the world. It was important to us to give back. We were lucky, we were fortunate, whatever, for many years. So when we started Jeunesse, it was to help people and make their lives better and help them find what they're looking for. Jeunesse Global uses a marketing strategy known as MLM to run their business. MLM companies build and manage their sales by recruiting and motivating independent distributors to go and sell their products. Donna Albabtain, a student investigator, explains this in more detail. An MLM exactly stands for multi-level marketing which is actually a strategy that is used to encourage existing distributors within a company to recruit new distributors. It offers products and services rather than just an opportunity to become a distributor. Jeunesse offers a range of cosmetics, as well as DNA repair serums that have been featured in multiple shows due to their outstanding results. This is a product we're going to see if it works. It's called Instantly Ageless. And the idea is that it works very quickly. And the way it works is you just need a very small amount. And then you apply it to areas where you might be a little bit puffy. To show the results here. <laughs> Voila. But are things as they seem, or is it too good to be true? Dr. Osama Masalma is a formula researcher with over 20 years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry. Dr. Masalma presents a thorough analysis of the ingredients found in Janessa's top product, Instantly Ageless. After reviewing the products, we found that uh, seven out of eight ingredients are uh, used as a preservatives and coloring agents. We found only one ingredient to be uh, act as active ingredient, which is the acetylhexapeptide 8. So uh, Botox or acetylhexapeptide uh, works as paralyzing the, the, the muscles to prevent the contraction of the muscles. Uh, FDA do not license, do not approve cosmetics or dietary supplements. This means that you can put any cosmetics you want or any skincare product you want to the, on the market. You can put it on the market without pre-market FDA approval. This is all approved by like, yeah, the FDA all, and all approved, yeah, all approved. As witnessed, the medical field showcases multiple flaws in the products. But how shocking is it for an ex-distributor to support these claims? When we um, looked into their website, they mentioned that all their distributors um, try the product. And obviously, yes. you, you said you tried it. And what did you think about it? No, it's not worth it at all. Like, I did not have see any difference. Or maybe it, it, my skin becomes worse. 
why would a billion dollar company lie to their customers about their so-called top selling products? Turns out, Jeunesse uses its healthcare products as cover. E-commerce stores like eBay are riddled with their products, unable to be sold. Reinforcing the insignificance of their products, clashing statements collected from a current Jeunesse distributor versus an ex-Jeunesse distributor are distressing to say the least. All events related for the company or any new products or any coaching or any training, when you uh, joining, you will see every day a Jeunesse have event talking about the product, talking about the industry, talking about the company. They did not tell us how to market them exactly, but they can like learning us how to talk with people that they have a several stages. Uh, to talk with people, to like convince them to to enter. So after uh, two minutes only, you can change anything in your face. Also, all problems in the skin or in the face or anything uh, or remove. I do not see any difference, or maybe my skin becomes worse. Like they say that it's good, it's make you perfect. Your skin no acne, no. I have tried maybe three products or four, one of them for skin, uh, for body skin, but I have not seen any difference. So in eight weeks, like two months, you can reach to your ideal weight. I have tried the one that for weight loss, I did not lose anything. I'm going to gym, I'm, I'm diet, and I take the pills and I still did not lose weight. They told me that if I take two daily, I will lose around five kilos without doing anything. When a company's goods are an insignificant source of income, it starts to resemble a pyramid scheme instead of an MLM business. In 2016, a lawsuit filed by two ex-distributors of Jeunesse claimed that Jeunesse had committed consumer fraud, among other allegations. After a tough two-year-long struggle, the case was settled in 2018 with Jeunesse paying a whopping 2.5 million U.S. dollars for the plaintiffs. It seems as though Jeunesse has proved itself guilty by pleading innocence. We definitely believe Jeunesse is a pyramid scheme, as after research and interviews, it was clear that the company's main goal was to get more distributors rather than just sell their products and they should be regulated, if not stopped. To ensure that this investigation proves useful, it is in the viewer's best interest to be on the lookout for schemes like Genesis and conduct research prior to engaging with such companies. What if I told you that there was an easier way to be rich, independent, and successful? All you'd have to do is buy and sell these personal care products. Sounds too good to be true, right? Not to Nuskin. Nuskin Enterprise is an American multi-level marketing company. They develop and sell personal care products and dietary supplements for middle-aged women through social media. They also target young adults who want to finance themselves. But what is multi-level marketing? An MLM is a way a company is structured. It's called uh, multi-level marketing. And uh, how the company works is basically that uh, the company hires distributors and then they require their distributors to hire sub-distributors. That's how the MLM works. But there's something not quite right about Nuskin. They don't run like other businesses. Why not? Nuskin has similar characteristics to a different type of group. Let's talk about Jim Jones, for instance. He started a progressive organization advocating for civil rights and operating homes for the elderly and whoever wants to help make the world a better place. He made everyone feel important, especially college kids and older women. Jim used to recruit people by having bus tours which is our version of social media today. Jim organized tours with his members around the US and would have stops to conduct talks. Once people were interested, they'd hop onto the bus and join the rest of the group. 
These bus tours were used for Jim to promote his idea and pick people up to then be a part of the organization. Jim would conduct three-day workshops to make people realize that they would be making good decisions. In the end, however, 900 men, women, and children committed mass suicide due to Jim's orders. It turned out that Jim was leading the biggest cult in modern day history. It's all about blind belief. People were ready to be a part of something great and the outcome was unfortunate. We are not saying that Newskin is a cult, but how is Jim Jones' organization related in any way? The company promotes its products in 54 markets through a network of approximately 1.2 million independent distributors. But where did they find these people and who are they? First type of customers are people who actually believe in the product and believe that their product is good and use these products daily. And then there are the other type of customers where they buy the license to sell the product. But these distributors were once customers. How they convert? Now how they turn customers into distributors is through convincing them that the company is actually doing something good and that the, their products are good. So when we had our interviews, they would tell us how good their products is and uh, what kind of uh, things it has done for the society. The new skin representatives also make it quite attractive with all their benefits, claiming they get 13,000 New Zealand dollars a month, exclusive treatment once they climb up high enough, prestigious titles, networking parties with other elites, doing humanitarian work that helped malnutritioned African children, helping others by bringing them in, and etc. Newskin seems to be too reminiscent of the cult checklist. Number one, the group is focused on a living leader to whom members seem to display excessive passion towards. Number two, the group displays unquestioning commitment. Number three, the group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. Number four, the group is preoccupied with making money. And number five, the group is elitist, claiming a special exalted status for itself, its leaders and members. It seems too obvious to miss out on when you look at it all laid out for you on a screen. But it's not that easy to spot out when you're in the middle of it. The Jonestown Massacre was a classic example of how much power a single leader can possess. He convinced thousands of people to sacrifice their own lives to ascend to Jim Jones to what he referred to as a higher place of existence. One man controlled the lives of thousands of people. MLMs, like Newskin, claim to help people become independent. But is that really their main goal? Everyone under the CEOs are puppet masters and the rest are their puppets. They make you run around selling products so that they don't have to. Guess where a large portion of that money goes? That's right, to the puppet masters themselves. With over 1.2 million independent distributors, this could be one of the biggest puppet shows in our world today. But what's so bad about joining an organization like this? Is it so bad that a company's goal is to grow as big as possible? Their plan is to dominate and influence people's lives. In a day and age controlled by the top 1%, the fight for dominance is a global threat. But what are the repercussions for being a part of this agenda? And why stay there for so long? There are so many things being sold to us, and having good intentions, we buy into them. The truth varies and the jury is still out there. Are we being conned into living a life we never chose to live? Truths feel comfortable, but does that make them more true than they actually are? Look out for yourself. Don't be so quick to join these groups. There truly is a fine line between MLMs and cults, muddled with a thick layer of corporate greed, power, and fame. With almost every business functioning on corporate greed, it's hard to see how MLMs are any different. Just look out and question everything every business pitches to you.
Now it's time for an intermission. Come back in five minutes after you've had a little bathroom break or grab some popcorn and we'll start with part two.
Welcome back, and now part two of our show. of us that has to do with nature when we work with our own hands. I mainly enjoy doing photography and more particularly art direction, building concepts to evoke an emotion. of working with others, the, the messiness of sort of breaking out of what you think is normal. Every time you think you know that you've got it figured out, one year later it has to break again. It doesn't stay the same. You just got to keep going with it. All right, let's work with what we have. What does my artwork mean to me? 
I guess illustration started off as a coping mechanism. Growing up, it was a way for me to handle my anxiety, the day to day, the mundane. And I guess since life is a series of moments, I would describe my work the same way. And lately, I've had so much homesickness. So I've been drawing Cairo, the streets, the people. And with every illustration, I feel like I understand home just a little bit more. So I guess that's what my artwork means to me to live a moment, record it, and share it with others. Those persistent open calls lead to the cycle of making without meaning. I am actively seeking an escape from the cycle to focus on being present in the process.
Thanks for joining us tonight. And a very special thank you to all of the reviewers who supported the two projects this semester. Thanks.